Basically, the 2004 movie Primer is about two engineers, Aaron and Abe, who accidentally make a machine that allows them to travel backwards in time. Initially they plan to use it just to make money off the stock market, but with a week everything goes wrong, and their lives are drastically changed for ver the basic concept in the movie itself is very difficult to grasp. But the complexity of the movie primer doesn't end there. There are multiple timelines at least nine the entire movie is set, as if we are eavesdropping on the conversations of the characters. A lot of things are left unsaid, and hence leaves a lot of scope for further interpretation. I will try to explain the basic concepts in the movie. If the entire movie is less open in front of your eyes then the thrill of watching the movie is lost. I watched the movie for like four times before I reached this conclusion. Now keeping these basic facts in mind try watching the movie again and come up with your own version of the primer the machine that Abe and Aaron creates makes the object kept inside to loop in time. That is if the machine is started at 12 o'clock, say point A in time, and is switched off at 12.01 say point b in time no outside the machine time flows from a to b linearly but the machine makes the particle kept inside to loop from a to b then back to a and so on until after an unspecified approximately 1300 it gets out of the system so for the person thing kept inside the machine one minute from a to b feels as 1300 plus minutesi will explain this based on how the characters use it cheat on the stock market at 8.15 Abe sets the timer to 15 minutes and drives off to a hotel. At 8.30 after the timer runs down the machine is started. Abe spends the entire day in the hotel. At the end of 6 hours he comes back and enters the machine and stays in it for 6 hours while his stay at the hotel he gathers information about the stock prices. When he gets out the time is 8.30, when the machine was started initially. The Abe coming out of the machine is actually a double of the original, while the original Abe is now on the road driving off to the hotel. So now this double Abe knows which stock is going to rise the maximum, and so he gets a profit. When Abe time travels for the first time, he fears that things might go out of control, because they are dealing with a thing unknown to even them. So in order to get things right in case something goes wrong, Abe develops a second time machine, and starts it, before he time travels so that, if situation demands he could get in this failsafe and travel back in time, when he had not time traveled in the first place, and stop him from doing so. In which case the time travel would never have taken place to begin with. So basically the failsafe is a reset button also keep in mind, that unlike the popular belief, that history cannot be changed, even if we travel back in time. In this movie history can be changed this is evident when Aaron's double receives a phone call and his original in the hotel does not. The characters then go on to use this concept to get Rachel's ex-boyfriend in jail you have to bear in mind that the film is meant to be confusing. Part of the message of the film is how terrifying it would be if someone invented a time machine and the fact that suddenly chains of events can become incomprehensible is part of that. There is literally no way to know how Granger ended up in the box or ended up harmed by it. The other part of this is how horrifying the thought of someone being able to go back in time and retry interacting with you until they get the behavior they want is the only major revelation that's not clear and from which all others come is that by the time Abe uses the failsafe box Aaron has already used it. Aaron saw the storage manifest, realized a second unit was booked, and realized what the failsafe was. Namely, it was Abe's secret way of negating everything Aaron did with the time machine, if it turned out badly for Abe. So Aaron used it himself and set up a secondary failsafe for Abe to use, but just a moment later, so that Abe could still go back, but Aaron could go back further, and could not be overridden. This means that any time you see Aaron from the scene, where Abe tells him to go with him to show him something, it can be the second or third time Aaron's been there finally. When you initially watch Primer you are seeing the characters in different timelines, and it's only when the film ends that you understand what the title of the movie really means. I am a nerd geek, and I love the way the film shows the way time travel could actually work, and how it could all go wrong he should warn you that you won't understand the movie the first time you see it. After seeing it the first time, watch this video, then go back and watch the movie again. That is the true enjoyment of this film for me.
I've seen it several times so far, and I'm going to see it.